this immortal celestial song. It tells the story of right against wrong. It's also the war in the mind of man. So listen well to the tale at hand. The house of the Kurus had worldwide fame. Till the evil Karabas brought it to shame. So the righteous Pandavas set it right once more. With the help of Lord Krishna in the savage war. Since childhood the princess competed in play. But soon all the games they started to fray. The Karavas felt envy, then hatred set in. Malice soon followed their Pandava kin. They poisoned Bhima, then tried to drown him. The Karavas just hated to see him win. Since he was the strong man of the brothers' fight, but Bhima escaped their trap alive. They burned the Pandavas in the palace of wax, but they all escaped without leaving tracks. They returned with Draupadi, their new bride and queen. To rule half the kingdom in spite of the scheme. Old Duryodhana was livid with rage. His maniacal ego would now set the stage as he schemed with his uncle Shakuni by name to cheat the Pandavas in a rigged dice game. He challenged his cousins to a game of dice. Yudhishthira accepted, though it was unwise. But the code of right conduct he had to uphold. So the five Pandavas soon entered the fold. They gambled and lost. It seemed like a dream. They lost their kingdom, themselves and their queen. Now Duryodhana had triumphed at last, but the royal assembly was all aghast. As beautiful Draupadi was dragged by her hair, not one court elder tried to stop this affair. And when the king's son showed his thigh to her face, Bhima vowed, It will be crushed by my mace. The Kauravas continued their sport of sin. By disrobing the party, the bride of their kin, five husbands to pale could not intervene. Bound by the law, they could not save their queen. Her pleading eyes searched the courtroom in vain. But the elders just bowed their old heads in shame. Now her only refuge was the Krishna divine. She called on the Lord to save her in time. Right before everyone, her sorry unraveled just on and on. Her honor was spared. The queen saved her face as a deadly hush came over the place. Her voice cried out 
like thundering doom. There is no Saba, there is no problem. There is no justice, there are no elders. Where there is no righteousness. Am I a slave or am I a queen? Will no one stand up to what you have seen? I demand the hand that has dragged me in to be cut from this son's arm of sin. Now Bima could contain himself no more And before this Asana could reach for the door This terrible oath rang throughout the room I'll rip him apart, I'll drink his blood soon The assembled elders now censor the deed so King Dhritarashtra proclaimed them all free. He gave back the kingdom and all they had lost. Thus keeping the peace in spite of the cost. But his wicked son said, oh they'll never forgive. We insulted the party, they won't let us live. They'll bring their army, we all might be slain. So let's send him to exile with a second dice game. Tired and weak, the king gave consent. Knowing his son would never relent. The Pandavas were summoned, the stakes made clear. Now future and fate would be decided here. The Pandavas stood silent, their faces ash white. Knowing that Dharma was their only might. Once more their kingdom was lost in the game. And for thirteen years they had to remain. Oh no, my lord, this cannot be right. Maybe this time the Pandavas to fight. So Lord Krishna advised them to fight right away, but only to show what Dharma must say. And also to glorify Yudhishthira's name. But the party he promised revenge for her shame. Yudhishthira said, Lord, let's finish this game. We'll go to the jungle, we'll all bear the pain. For the sake of Dharma, we now must be strained. So let it be written, so let it remain. Thus, for thirteen long years, they had remained in exile. You see, this was the way to For twelve long years, the losers would have to give up their kingdom and live in the forest. And then, they would have to spend the entire 13th year unrecognized in some inhabited place. However, if they were recognized before the year was out, the losers must then once again return to exile for another 12 long years. But if unrecognized, the losers would have fulfilled the terms of the wager and get back their kingdom. So for twelve long years, the 
Pandava princess, along with the party they came, lived like simple hermits in the jungles of India. Sages and saints would visit and stay. The pure love of God would call them each day. In wisdom and patience, they spent day and night. But everyone knew they would have to fight. So Arjuna did tapas in order to gain. The grace of heaven and men to attain some divine weapons that would help in the fight for Dharma, for God, for truth, and for right. Twelve years flew past. The time was at hand when they had to hide in some distant land. They chose the kingdom where the Rata was king. They all took disguises as servants to him. For one year exactly, they hid in this way. Then sent a message on the very last day To inform the Kauravas that now they had won And to give them back their rightful kingdom All Duryodhana's raids knew no bounds I'll kill the Pandavas on the battlegrounds no kingdom, no five cities will I give to my king. Not one needle point of land will I let them win. The five Pandavas, oh, they wanted no war. But this was too much, it had gone too far. There comes a time when all must fight. For Dharma, for God, for truth and for right. For Dharma, for God, for truth and for right. Yes, for God, for truth, for love and for right. And still you still ask, oh Krishna, please, go to the city. And try to appease Our evil cousin Before he will die And all the brave kings Who believe in his life Krishna said I will do what you ask But no Dharma Raja It's a useless task This war must be fought as a fight for all Cause Dharma must rule Or this world will fall Yes, Dharma must rule Or this world will fall Know that Dharma must win Or this world will fall to try to avert this war where great heroes would die but he knew all reason would be in vain this war would be fought in Dharma's name the king's son was ego personified with his close companions of lust, greed, and pride. The Guru and Bhishma knew this was the truth. 
All the wise men agree to fight was to lose. Oh, this story of Tana just could not take. So he stormed from the hall with anger and hate. And all of his friends, they follow behind. You see, following ego makes everyone blind. But he was recalled by his mother, the queen. Who tried to show him his vain evil dream. But conceited he sneered, just watch my great skill. All along the five brothers, I vowed to kill. Grandsire Bhishma called his boast absurd. For he knew the truth by what he had heard. He understood Dharma, steadfast and true. But his pledge to the king, he could not undo. Bhishma was certain from what Krishna said. That all the king's sons were as good as dead. One hundred strong sons, the king was to blame. His avarice greed was his claim to fame. Krishna suggested one last way to stop. Bind the four villains and please give them up to the five Pandavas for Dharma's sake. Then your kingdom won't be plunged in a wake. And then Krishna showed the Kaurava clan. His omnipresent self, he revealed his plan. His mission was love and Dharma combined. The establishment of both he would leave behind. Then Vishnu said, Krishna, please know. You saw for yourself who we all try to show. My son, the wrong of his ego state. Lord, I bear you no ill, the Pandavas no hate. But I can't betray my sons, my blood. My son holds the power, you saw him struck. I'm blind and helpless, O oh Krishna divine. My attachment, my pride, shaped this son of mine. So Govinda left in his chariot. His sadness and love was seen by a lot. For he knows all from beginning to end. He's the Lord of all, the Pandava's friend. He's the Lord of all, he's everyone's friend. Yes, the Lord of love, he's everyone's friend. So now war seemed inevitable. Soon both sides made preparations for the impending war. Arjuna and Goyatana went to see Krishna to seek his help. And Krishna said, Oh, I love you both, my kinsmen, but I cannot divide my army. So therefore one of you must choose me alone, and then the other will have the support of my heart. So choose. Without hesitation, Arjuna exclaimed, I choose you, Krishna, please. Be on our side. Duryodhana agreed and took Krishna's army to fight on the side of the Kauravas. And I must tell you, 
He was secretly very pleased and thought of Juno food, creating one Krishna for the mighty Yadava army. So now both sides prepared themselves by enlisting countless kings and heroes of their time to fight on their side. You see, it was improper for Krishna to bear arms in this war, so he told Arjuna that he would accept the humble job of being Arjuna's charioteer. Before too long, all the preparations were complete. The Kauravas anointed their Grand Sayabhishma as their commander-in-chief. And he was supported by such great masters and heroes like Dronacharya. Drona was a master of weapons. And he was also the guru or teacher of both the Pandava and the Kaurava princes. And then there was Sal, Radia, or Karna as he was also called, who was the eldest son of Kunti, her firstborn, whom she sent a drift in a basket. But later in life, Duryodhana became his friend, gave him the kingdom and thus became his sponsor. And of course there was Kripa, Shakuni, Dusasana, and many other countless kings and heroes of their time. The Pandavas asked Lord Krishna to choose their commander-in-chief. And Krishna decided to follow Arjuna's suggestion. And thus, Yushkajumna was anointed. And he was supported by such great kings and heroes as Prapada, Sadyaki, Virata, Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu was the brave and skillful warrior son of Arjuna. Oh, and there were many other kings and heroes who flocked to the Pandava side. And of course, the five Pandavas themselves. They were the sons of King Pandu, who was Dhritarashtra's brother. Pandu retreated into the forest because he was not feeling well, and to live the last years of his life in the search of himself, in the search of God. He had two wives, Kunti and Madhu. Kunti was the mother of the three older Pandava brothers. That was Yudhisthira, who was the eldest, also known as son of Dharma. And then Bhima, he was the strength of the Pandava army, and was also known as the son of the wind god. And of course Arjuna. who was nobility, courage, and skill, steadfastness combined, and, oh, he was also known as Son of Indra, who was the King of the Heavens. And Madri, the second wife, was the mother of Nakula and Sahadeva, the two heavenly twins, the two youngest Pandava brothers. And they represented wisdom, beauty, steadfastness, and all the arts combined. So now, both sides were ready. Standing there on the Kuru Chakra, facing each other. And the Kaurava army was arranged in the Crescent Formation. You see, they had 11 divisions and were far superior in number. Pandava forces had only seven divisions. And because of that, they arranged themselves in the needle formation. Arjuna had been elected to start the fight with his mighty bow Gandiva. So, 
he asked Krishna to drive that chariot right between the two armies so he could see his foes clear and start the battle. to start But on looking around a pain struck his heart His kinsmen on both sides were men walking there Arjuna's bow slipped Despair filled his head My life would grieve and sorrow will burn and Krishna please show me what I must learn I just cannot kill My kinsmen this way I'd rather give up This body of clay Oh, how can I kill My guru, my kin I'm doomed to lose Even if we win Oh, what 
what is my duty? Lord, please be my light. Guide me, Govinda, cause I cannot fight. Govinda, I cannot fight. Govinda, please be my guide. Teach me smile, because you see, when a man finally sees that the God in himself is the same God, Atma, spirit, or soul in all other things, then he will not hurt himself by inflicting pain on any other being. It is then, and only then, that man is ready to go on to the path of the highest realization. So now. Arjuna was ready to learn. Lord Krishna smiled and Sadhguru began. Since Arjuna was ready now to understand the Satchitananda, the Atma in all, and to fully learn. About his duties called Desire must die So the immortal soul Can shine through the body And be in control Use your sword and wisdom To slay every doubt Cause ignorance is Just illusion's shout It makes you believe the unreal is real And keeps you in bondage To all that you feel Your soul is eternal It's always the same All else will change That's the name of the game And Dharma is the duty Of each righteous man Without attachment to the fruits in the end Each man has a duty He was born to do It only depends How well and how true Oh Arjuna you are The immortal soul So realize now That ignorance stole Your wisdom your detachment friend My Maya's got you In the palm of her hand And all of your kinsmen That are now facing you They to their dharma In life were untrue But they cannot die And you're not to blame Each one his own Karma must claim Karma must balance All give and take The constant debris That all men make Whether kindness and love Or malice and greed Reactions the price Of each single deed Your soul is eternal Oh, it can never die Your attachment to name and form is a lie All is my will as it must always be This is the truth eternally So rise above your senses, O oh immortal one Through the wisdom of yoga this can be done You're born a warrior Your duty is to fight Against all evil For God and for right Stand up our dream For God and for right Come on dear friend Your duty is to fight I'm still confused 
whole life is unfair. This world contradicts truth everywhere. Which is the road to attain the supreme? Please help me, Lord, to dispel this dream. Govinda was patient, divine and complete. So once again, he began to repeat. Through devotion and wisdom, karma yoga of deed. Then without attachment, that's how man is free. Renunciation is also part of the attainment of God, the highest love, God our Father or Mother Divine, Creator of all, they're all names of mine. So dedicate your mind, your heart and your soul. Just do it for me, may God your goal, then I will guide you in every way. So arise, great warrior, fight for me today. Come on, it's time, fight for me today. Get up, my friend, fight for me today. His cosmic face Till Arjuna was blinded By so much grace All of creation From beginning to end Was contained in the form Of Krishna, his friend I am creation I am that I am When Adharma rules I take birth as a man to establish dharma and proclaim the truth. So when I take a birth, everyone must choose. Arjuna, the mind, is called the field. In this war against ego, I'll be your shield. And to everyone, I'll be charioteer If he calls on me And if he holds me dear And blessed are those With the inner eye They see only God All else is a lie They all understand This life as a dream They all ride on bliss to the supreme so completely surrender everything to me that is one way which will set you free so let darkness vanish merge into my light dispel illusion your duties to fight so arise great warrior your duties to fight. Come on, Arjuna, the time is now right. Arjuna rose, Gandiva in hand. He lifted his bow, they could all see him stand. The twang of his bowstring rang loud and clear. Arjuna was ready, gone all his fear. Krishna, I love you, you are my goal. You live in my heart, you are in control. My faith is now firm, no doubts can come. I'm ready to say, your will be done. Lord, now I can say, your will be done.
marches and trumpets galore. Elephants charging, the warriors' wild roar. Around the charge, the day in the sun. Oh, it was terrible carnage, the war had begun. The Pandavas fair badly that very first day. But from then on it was a different array. The gods came to watch all the heroes match skill. Yes, many brave girls made the heavens flow. Arjuna's prowess made Vishnu so proud. As they fought their last duel, the devas cheered loud. Here she comes and arrived, who been born to slay the great master bowman on the tenth day. She comes in last life was in a woman's frame. Who believed that Vishma was the cause of her pain? So she vowed revenge, then earned Shiva's grace. Now born as a man, they stood face to face. Bhishma knew this, so he did not fight back. As she cut and zeroes, she ordered Arjuna's attack. Soon his fatal arrows struck Bhishma's chest. Who was proud to die, thus killed by the best. Bhishma fell backwards, a smile crossed his face. Cause the arrows that pierced him made a bed of grace. They suspended his body between heaven and earth. This was in honor of his noble birth. His head was drooping in an awkward way. So he asked Arjuna for assistance that day. With three sharp arrows, he obliged the request. And propped up the head so Bhishma could rest. The points pierced the skull, his mind became clear. Once more he recalled as his kinsmen drew near. His knowledge of karma, divine and complete. As everyone gathered at the warrior's feet. I'm thirsty, he said, looking up at the sky. So Arjuna aimed down, let one arrow fly. Soon a stream of water gushed out of the ground. Now Bhishma could drink as they gathered around. By now all delusion had left his brain. He reviewed all the laws of Dharma again. And the son of Ganga discoursed to them all. The king's unclean food that caused his great fall. And he made his vow, he spoke it with force. I only will die when the sun turns north. I'll choose the moment, auspicious and right, for my soul to merge into the clear light. Soon the fighting was resumed one more time. Now Drona commanded the Karava clan with divine weapons, one in each hand. This master of mantras, Parashurama is there. An invincible warrior, beyond compare. Abhimanyu was killed in an unrighteous way. This great boy hero earned his fame that day. The murderous deed was witnessed by all. 
Now it was time the Karabas must fall. So Krishna suggested a trick to use to stop the fierce grown up or decide my blues. He promised to shoulder every bit of the blame for all things done in the Lord's own name. Rona's attachment was Ashwatthama, his son. So Krishna explained what had to be done. Yudhishthira proclaimed he could utter no lie. So Bhima made sure his elephant would die. Dharma Raja felt guilty as he half lied. When Drona asked him if Ashwatthama had died, so he softly added, I mean the elephant. But Drona believed his son's life had been spent. So Drona stopped fighting, it mattered no more. He assumed the yoga pose on the chariot floor. That's when Krishna Dumna cut off his head. But Rona's soul had already fled. His spirit rose high for all to see. Krishna Dumna's revenge was called unworthy. The heroes felt horror, such conduct brought shame. Despised was his deed, it had no claim to fame. On the same day Bhima fulfilled his first vow. He killed Bhusasana, ripped his arm out somehow. He drank his red blood, dancing with glee. Shouting to party, I've done it for me. Then Radya was killed by Arjuna's steel. As he tried to dislodge his chariot wheel. This again was unrighteous in everyone's eyes. But when Adharma rules, more Adharma will rise. Yes, when evil rules, more evil will rise. It seemed to all in those turbulent days that Krishna condoned many unrighteous ways just to make sure that Pandavas would win. How could Krishna allow such unrighteous sin? But all wise men know, God showed everyone. If violence is used, more violence will come. And to right any wrong in this ego way. Each side will lose righteousness that day. Karma is the action that all men must make. The law states reaction must follow its way. This war is reaction to wrong action sent. By lust, greed, and ego, who would not repent? This war is for kingdom or the heart of man. Whether good or evil will rule the land. With God on our side, all hearts will win. Bad habits are doomed, like the Karava king. Karavas were beaten, Pandavas had won. And Duryodhana was now on the run. His body was wounded with fever he burned. He knelt in a cool pond, and that's where he learned. But the waters of wisdom cooled him too late. 
He'd been ruled by ego, lust, greed, and hate. The law of action and reaction was clear. When he saw the five brothers drawing near. So he and Dina fought their last fight. With a battle royale, a mess of might. Till Bima recalled the vow that he took. And suddenly, his whole body shook. With a scream, he delivered the decisive blow. But no cheers were heard, it was far too low. Their fighting code said it was wrong and unfair. But his vow was redeemed, so he did not care. But when Bima stepped on the prince's face, Yudhisthira shouted, Stop this disgrace! Balarama arrived at that moment in time. Enraged, he stepped in to punish the crime. But Krishna stopped him, took his brother aside. He explained the insults to Draupadi the bride. And all other reactions to wrong actions sent. Until he calmed down his brother's contempt. At last it was over, now Dharma could rule. Protecting the righteous and establishing school. As ego lay down in the hot Indian sun. The Pandavas chose God and God had won. They chose the Lord.